And our first one minute game is underway. That is the Chess 960 affair. It is in the books. Uh, we, we maintain a one point lead for the Frenchman as we move on to classical bullet chess with 26 and a half minutes left. It's only a one game match, Robert. It's only a one game match. And I don't even know who to call the Frenchman anymore because Fabiano keeps reverting the French defense. So does that make him more French than MVL? I'm not sure, but I'm not um, sure that that really is even applicable here. But okay. Um, but wow, you just you just sounded like me. We just had a role reversal there. <laughs> that was like just super dismissive and made me feel terrible about my you know. It's okay. Comment. No, you know what? You you couldn't make a bad joke if you tried. I just you know I love it. I love all the awkward jokes coming out of your mouth. Um, Again, we have a French position where, despite my, my criticisms of it being boring, we're getting some dynamic chess. Kings on opposite sides of the board, both sides. Um, clear things to play for, so, so this is going to be aggressive. Aggressive chess by both sides. Only 25 minutes left in the whole match. This will decide who moves on to play Hikaru Nakamura in the Ooh. semifinals of our Blitz Battle Championship. So what I will say about MVL's play thus far is he loves making the moves G4 and G5. I've seen mm -hmm. it in so many games. And here in particular, White's position is just absolutely dominating. The up a pawn for the moment, the pawn C5 will be impossible to gain back. Or not impossible, but very difficult. D4 was a uh, nice effort, I yeah. should say, by Fabiano. But it's a, unfortunately, yeah, it's a yeah. common kind of push here. This is almost like a poison pawn sort of French um, in, in, in some respects, but Black would like to get H6 and, and try to open up things on, on, on the king's side to get counterplay, but, but MVL's not having it. He's just, he's bringing, okay, he, he was bringing the pressure to E6. Fabiano gets the move I was thinking he needed to play for. Okay, well now it's feeling, okay, so two pawns are still two pawns, so even now the queens are traded. Um, this is not looking good. Just rook takes a five here, game over. I don't know. Yeah. Oh well, now is it, it is. That was a blunder yeah, now, of the piece. That's a huge um, blunder. Yeah, that was that was not a happy, a happy move for Fabiano. But right before that, I thought that if King to C seven, there might have, or even Rook E six, I thought there was some chance to maybe sit on it for for Caruana. Very little chance. The problem is White would have won H four H five and just brought the King in either F four or H four and taken either the F or H pawn. So it was a actually quite an easy win. But you're right. It, he could have put up some more resistance. And now. Fabiano reverting back to the yep. uh, Nidorf line, where he got a better position, but he ended up losing. So it yeah, seems like but he is he, well versed. Even with the better position, it, it, this is a slightly different move order with Black having already committed to the the C file plan versus the D five plan. Now I think Caruana is going to have to try to put something on D five to prevent D five. Um, or, or, or okay, I guess he can give up the bishop pair. But so this is kind of similar to, or, or not similar. This is sort of typical as a way that White can try to prevent black from breaking d5 um right mvl loves his light square bishop would rather lose the dark square bishop so that he can keep the threat of d5 alive uh, and i love white's position here i think black has really been pushed back um very well by um caruana and h6 beautiful move oh yeah God. he's opening up the f6 square here comes f4 oh boy. Oh boy. Maxime doesn't like it. He's uh, trying to simplify out, but but uh, don't just, don't get too excited for White's position yet because there may be an exchange sack coming on C6 and the dark square bishop can sometimes hold, but okay, not here. No, no here I think I think MVL's about to lose in his in his famous Nightorf. Yeah, rook takes F7 feels pretty uh decent, but it actually might not be the best move. So let's see. Maybe unnecessary uh, to go to sack town just yet. Um Yeah. It's actually kind of annoying this e4 move because yeah, it, it's, actually it's it's hard it, to stop e3 without without playing rook takes f7 and Caruana agrees. Wait a second, hold the phone. E3 was not the move I was anticipating. Yeah, but I thought look at it. If queen e2, black might just take on d5 and laugh in the face of danger of no, the rook. Rook takes f8. Rook takes f8 check. Rook takes a 97 check. Ah. Picking up Okay, so he still had to go for the uh, for the queen for two rooks position, which still must favor white with black's king being open. But but this is not so simple with black having established the pawn on e three. It's no longer that clear that white's just just better here. Right, knight c six is a good move as was played. 
Probably and you should play c3 here, I think. I, uh, black can't take on d5 anyway. I think c3, prepare to bring the king into d3. No? No, he says. Yep. I just think that maybe black's not even that much worse anymore. Okay, now something's happening. Knight g7 check. No, there's not enough there. Queen f6, he played it. Whoa, the mating net ensues. Or will no, we, we'll just have the draw. We'll, Unless we'll black draw. can play bishop e7. No, e5 rook is hanging. That's uh, why he's going... That's why so queen just like that, we have, our, we have a draw. And uh, that, was, that was quite the... Quite the back and forth game there. It, it would be interesting to look at that one over with an engine um, or not, because I, I don't really like doing things like that. Um, but MVL right now is playing very, very smart uh, bullet because he's up. What is he up now? One, two games? In the, yeah. How many games is he up in the match? Two yeah, games he's, in the he's match? He's up two currently after, after winning the first bullet game and, um, and already having been up two games in the three minute portion. So. Well, so he's up uh, two games, and he's playing a safe line for him, a much better version than we saw earlier when uh, Fabiano got a, uh, got a great position against the IQP. Now white is doing pretty decently, has full control over the open E file. Um, the pawn D4 is never really going to be a target, at least not for the near future. So uh, the bishop on C4 better than the counterpart on D7. I'm liking white's position, especially after this exchange on uh, E5. Yeah, if you no longer have the isolated pawn, right? I mean... And queen a5 is a very smart move, trying to encourage another weakness on, by going a6. The queen can now go c7, and what is black doing? Queen c7, he, oh, queen b4 is an option after queen c7. So there are, are some tactics at play um, that you must be careful. I but, was just going to say, I wonder if he should try to avoid the exchange of bishops, like bishop f1 and, and, and bind down the queen side. But, but bishop e6 was played in, in a timely manner by Fabiano because bishop f1, I think, I think black could just gobble the a2 pawn. Um, Okay, so now we're just getting a big trade. Again, from a match perspective, a draw like this doesn't hurt MVL at all. Um, he can basically push this position on for another two minutes, and yep. and do so with you know in a justified way. He's not just taking away time off the match clock. I mean, if anybody can win, it's him, right? Right. We've seen strong players lose four on three rook endings. So. Um, so this is a really tough one. After this game is where Fabiano needs to pull himself together, take a deep breath. Right now, unfortunately for him, he has the distressed, distressed Fabiano look number six. Um, <laughs> MVL has has zoned in. He now has probably could play the bad guy on a Die Hard movie look, which is one of MVL's most dangerous looks. Um, <laughs> seriously, that could be Hans Gruber's brother right there, or maybe like French cousin. That's awesome. And go crazy. Um, all right, here we go. So what's happened? I mean, seriously, this is a rook ending that is basically a draw, but but we'll see how long White wants to push on. Yeah, and White has to be careful not to lose after some kind of weird like F4, rook A2 check, and right. all of a sudden your king's too exposed. But of course, it's always rook E2 back. But, um, oh, okay, so, so some back rank issues now. So if queen E8, F4 is possible. Uh, White's king is no longer in danger. F4 so is can't... still so double-edged, right? I mean, it, it, as soon as you do that, oh, he goes for it. But as soon as you do that, F6. you know, you better be careful not to blunder because that's the one way White could mess up this position is by exposing the second rank to the king. Right. Okay, but uh, but he, but if you can trade queens, then exposure of the second rank doesn't matter. Yeah, at some point I'm trying. White needs to play e6 at the right moment. Yeah. Um, well, that's what he's aiming for. He's building up to it. Yeah. He's got rook d8 okay. now. If he if he decided yeah. that the queen ending, wait, hold a tick. The back door has opened up for the for the queen. This was the one way we said White could get in trouble right here. Yeah, White, and especially in bullet, this is how you get in trouble. Uh, yeah, this is this not, is how you get in trouble in these things. Okay, but then unfortunately for black, rook b1 falls. It's like queen a check, queen e4 check, and you lose right. uh, most likely. But there, so there I, are I, things. But still, if you're Fabiano, you're happy that you held the draw here. I actually, mean, I, he I think try to that... win if you're black. Uh, he could have tried to win. There was actually a, a trick. Uh, I, I agree with you. You're happy to hold. But there was some rook, queen check, rook b2. And if queen a to e4, you go g6, h takes g6, king g7. And there are no more checks. And all of a sudden, white's king's in deep uh, danger. So he had wow. an opportunity. 
you, know, you need to take those kind of opportunities. Of course, with little time in your clock, it, you know, it's a very risky decision. But you know, Fabiano is not just going to you know win games um, easily here. I mean, NBL is such a good bullet player that you need to take your chances. Right. Yeah, the more you say uh, that line, thinking about it in my head as well, I think I think that's a pretty tough line actually to refute. Um, so, yeah, uh, Fabiano may have missed a huge chance there, and MVL made a huge mistake. We, we kind of called it right. We were foreshadowing that F four might be the one way for White to get in trouble, and that's what happened. Unfortunately for Caruana, he misses his chances, and now we're in another game. This is not the kind of game that Fabiano wants in in the bullet, right? I mean, look at the position. At best, it's going to take you another two minutes to win this position. At best, and yeah, two minutes is even I would say longer right. I mean, than I that mean and, and it's not the kind of game you want when you're down two games in the match. Fifteen minutes. Um, so we need to make sure we continue to update the players. Yeah, and actually, it's not even a criticism of uh, Fabiano's style. He is such a principled player. He likes to outplay you, outmaneuver you. He's not going to sacrifice all his pieces and beat you. Um, but this is actually really bad, especially in bullet chess. If you are that kind of like Morozevich type player and you're quick and you're sacrificing pieces at any moment, you could just destroy your opponent. I mean, it's why Hikaru is so good, one of the many reasons. But he is such a tactical genius. Not that Fabiano is not great at tactics. Of course he's great at tactics. In fact, now knight takes b6, knight before, you just hung a pawn. So he, and he found it. Um, yeah, but this, this is big here. If Caruana wins this game, no, no, but I agree totally with what you're saying. But I, I could argue, devil, I could play the the devil's advocate card and say, you know, it's one reason to favor MVL in the bullet. But also, if Caruana had a two game lead heading into the bullet, that style would have been one reason why it might have been really hard for MVL to overtake him. Right? Can you imagine Caruana's really solid style if MVL was down two games? I mean, I think that. We could look back to some of the critical games in the blitz portion if Fabiano is not able to catch up and Rook attribute those as big, big moments. He missed it. He missed it. Rook takes d6 was just hanging. Yeah, it was. Again, it's still hanging. No, now it's not because of the rook on a6, but he, uh, missed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he missed rook takes d6 a move ago. Rook takes d6, so, everybody. The point is that if pawn takes, knight takes as a fork town, and if rook takes, rook takes b5, rook takes d7 was probably good for white. So... So, okay, both sides getting under time pressure. We'll see who has the better nerves and the better time scramble skills. Huh, well, yeah, I don't like what's happened. I mean, still still very good for White, of course, and finally something very, very well and decently quickly. Um, C5 at some point has to be played. Okay, missed his opportunity just there, but now he can go C5. Um, yeah, I mean, White's doing very, very well. Knight D7, he played it. Ah, knight c3 next. Mm. Okay, no, knight Fabiano's playing this really well, but again, he, he already missed one tactical opportunity. And now now Black may have poked just enough holes at these pawns that he might be able to get a... Whoa! What is their moving I, fast? I can't and... calculate the knight maneuvers fast enough here. Okay, now d6 is hanging. This is starting to look really bad right, for Right, but here Black. comes e4 along with the pin knight on e3. Fabiano does not want this one to turn around. What's dangerous here nice for White move. is even winning He's the E6 pawn. What? Ah, he blunders knight. the rook. And that's exactly oh, what we no, were worried might he happen. Does, he didn't blunder because knight takes C2, knight takes C2 was good enough. But now all of a sudden it's four, what, three? It's going to be a three pawn, nope, two pawns for the knight. I can't even count fast enough. King G5 here. I mean, I think, you know, with the bullet experience, you'd find moves like King G5 in that position just now. Okay, White really should never lose this game, especially you trade a pair of rooks as it was just happened. Um, but not, you know, not the best showing there. Well, just tough for Fabiano because he was again. That was a game you want to win. That just took another two and a half minutes off the total game clock, and so to not get a victory is. Um, he just needs to offer a draw here. There he goes. Yeah, he's just giving it up. Playing this game on is not going to help his match chances. He knows that. We move on. 12 minutes left. A two-game lead for MVL, everybody. Don't go anywhere. The party is is uh, the party is in full swing here. Yeah, many, many, many missed opportunities by Caruana. I really feel like, um, you know, I mean, MVL is playing very well, and especially in the latter stages, in the three-minute and, and uh, especially. But I do feel like Fabian has had so many missed chances, so many opportunities to put some point, 
that's on the board and just really hasn't uh, had things going his way. But here, I mean, I'm worried for Fabiano in a bullet game. MVL, sharp tactician, very, very quick with his mouse. And all of a sudden, Black's position can uh, fall under fire. But it's the fight you're looking for, right? If you're down two games, you have the Black pieces, and you want to get a win uh, against a strong player, well, you got to make things open and tactical. So for both sides, this is a good decision. Um, yep. You're... Yeah. So G2 is, of course, the target. Eventually, Black would love to play D5. It looks like an opportunity, but unfortunately, with the pressure on the E file, you're never going to uh, get to do it with the king stuck on E8. So um, un I don't know. White looks no, good to me. I, I really like the practical decision here. For, for I mean, this is the game we've been calling for. This is I mean, Black has as many chances to win this as White does. In fact, with that, fact, it looks like MVL blundered. Um, yeah. Amazing. This, this is uh, Rook takes C2, free pawn. Give me that. Yeah, I mean, I, this is exactly the kind of play that the American needs to go with for the rest of the match if he's going to have any chance to win. So with 10 minutes left, if he wins this game, Robert, we are back to a one-game match. Yeah, and there's some tactics here. Knight D5. If you go, like, bishop to G1, then I can even go knight F4 check. Interesting. There's so many pins going on. But, I mean, but it's I, not Knight D5 great. can be met by just king F3, I guess, or... Well, I would love to take your bishop, probably, so... Look at Fabiano. No fear. He goes for the second pawn, allowing Good. infiltration and the threat of knight to c6. Right. But apparently he's totally fine. He's getting out of everything. He's running away. No, he's just losing a piece. No, well, yes. Yes, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Black was winning. He went from winning to losing. I mean, yeah, he might not even lose this somehow because there's a lot of pressure. That B pawn is annoying, um, but amazing. I mean, it's just a lot of oversights. Whatever swindles just happened there obviously ended up favoring uh, MBL in the end. Um, but but still, Caruana's yeah. got to be happy with the pressure he's been able to put on on uh, on MBL. Just a matter of, of, of making the less mistakes, right? Whoever makes less mistakes at this point is going to win the match. Yeah, yeah probably I, mean, I agree with that. Even if Black was winning after Rook takes B2, it feels like an impractical decision by Caruana. He already won a pawn. Probably should have just traded and converted. Um, was definitely a lot of counterplay to give White if you, if you hadn't calculated it out. So easy for us to say, but, but yeah, I, I, I feel like that might have been a little too risky. Yeah, for sure. Now White is winning. It's a matter of technique, but with uh, 10 extra seconds on the clock and up a knight for two pawns uh, should be enough. And um, MBL is just such a great bullet player. So king to g5 is, has to be played. Yeah, okay, that now, was a nice trick, everybody. The f5 pawn was poisoned due to a fork on e7 to the rook and king. So now Caruana is really up against it, losing the g pawn. Uh... This is a tough one. Might be better just to resign and, and go all out. we got a winner go home at this point, down three games in the match. So the more time comes off the clock here, I think the worse it is for Caruana as far as match strategy goes. Yeah, with only eight minutes left, I mean, you just have to resign and hope that the next game works out. But, again, he might not even have enough time to begin with because even if he wins three straight, the games generally take, what, two and a half minutes at least. So right. um, he he's in big, big trouble. What do they have? Well, MVL's up by three games. Fabiano obviously not happy with his play. Definitely, you know, I feel like this match has been much closer and much better for Fabiano than the score currently shows. I mean, I agree with you that he let some games get away. Um, but it's not over yet. If he wins this game, there is still, you know, there's still time to come back. So I think right here this is pretty much, this is pretty much make or break time as far as the, the total game clock running down.